Hello, and welcome back to the lab. I am not really sure if I can say this is a troubleshooting video or this is more a public service announcement video. However, a box came from Mauser as we open this up, which has some quite necessary parts in it. And we have a bit of transistors from, for another project, but we have the transistors that we need for this scope. So, essentially what we've got is I asked a question from some other technicians who have worked on these for longer than I have, and one of the responses that came back is there is a known fault in a Tektronix part number. It turns out I have all of them, or I have the known fault. Part number in question is 151. 0367-00. These are NPN transistors, and they are known to go leaky. I've found them all in this scope. There is quite a few of them. I will leave that there for a second. If somebody needs the, um, the Q numbers. The good news is, I did find them all, and you can get to them without pulling boards. So I thought for a little bit I was going to have to pull the timing board again. Turns out they're on the main board and the timing board. Uh, the scope is not on, has not been on for a couple of days. I will use my DCA Pro to show the fault. Uh, let's grab 502 here real quick. I marked them all with a silver top, so I just took a Sharpie and doodled a little bit of silver on them, so I have located them. And they're all over, but there's especially a significant amount of these in the sweep circuit for this 475. But if I turn them on, we'll test. And there's our problem indicated. Get a pointer here real quick. This found a NPN transistor, which is correct but it found a reverse protection diode in here, which is not correct. There's reverse leakage across the transistor. There's an extra diode in there that's not supposed to be. Now, if you just do a transistor test on these, they'll test fine. I te checked them on the meter, it tests good, but if you do a reverse bias collector, or emitter to collector, uh, it will show a diode drop. So I will fire up the curve tracer, and I'll see if I can show that. Okay, so I have the curve tracer set up. We have our device under test in the fixture. First test I want to run is just a leakage test across the transistor. Um, from the data sheet, these are good to 30-ish odd volts collector to emitter, so they should withstand that. I have the vertical deflection, or the horizontal deflection is set to 5 volts per division. Vertical deflection is one microamp. So, I'll start cranking up the collector volts. Oh, and the um, base is open, so it's not connected to anything. So, this transistor should not get excited and should stay off. The other thing is, I have the curve tracer in DC mode. That's why we see a dot. We don't see a swept line is because it's on DC, not uh, sweep. So there's 5, 10, 15, starting to get 20, 25, and we can see the leakage come up. Now I'll kick this over to AC, and it'll be really apparent why this thing's not, ha not happy. So we'll kick this up to AC. Where did my dot go? Oh, it was already off the screen. We will decrease our vertical deflection to half a volt per division. We're going to leave the same one microamp current range. And there you go. It's already falling. So that 
is not a healthy transistor, I'll bump up the current range to flatten it out. Actually, let's go to just... And we'll go up to 2 milliamps. And we'll just dial this up. And we've stopped going sideways because I have a little bit too much. There we go. So the transistor is not healthy. So I will have to replace all of these. Okay, the pinouts of the two transistors are different. The originals are CBE. The other ones are BEC. So what I got to do is I need to flip these two and then I need to put them in backwards to the orientation they're in in the original, but then they should all be good. Uh, through the magic of the camera, I will be back shortly. I'm going to check all these off as I go to make sure I don't miss any, but I'll get all the transistors put in, and then we will fire up the scope and hope there's no excitement. Okay, we've got a pile of bad parts. So let's see how many of these are actually bad. Dead. I'm going to test these just as fast as I can get them hooked up to the tester. Dead. 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 Man, it is not looking well, looking good for these transistors. I was guaranteed they were bad, but I don't like just, I like testing things for myself, but the testing is, this one's dead, the testing is proving uh, the observations. There was 13 of them in this uh, 485, or 475. That one's dead. That one's dead. If I'm going to make a crazy claim like 100% failure rate, I want to make sure I test them all. Although this one did. And I'm going to set this one aside because there's some more stuff I want to talk, to talk about that one. Dead. I've only got three more, so that's ten faulted out of this style of transistor. That one's dead. That one's dead. And that makes 100%. So of the transistors that I found in this scope, I did mark them with a silver top with the ones that I pulled out. They are a hundred percent failure rate. They are all have that diode that they're not supposed to have, so they have the reverse leakage junction. So they are toast. Um, 
one of the other ways I was told to identify these is if we take a look at the legs of the component. This is not, um, get a pointer. Hopefully I don't stab myself with this probe because these are sharp. Um, this is not paint. This will focus. There we go. Uh, this is actually tarnish. So this particular transistor, round leg on the transistor, tarnish where the socket was not. Um, I was told 100% guaranteed these were bad before I personally did the testing and put it on video. I wanted to make absolutely sure before I made that claim. However, in this scope, this particular transistor number, 151037000, a 100% failure rate. All of them were bad, all 13. Now, where were they? They were primarily on the sweep board. These guys in here. There was a couple of down here. These two over here. Um, and then there was a few more in here. On the bottom board, which is the main interface board. Tilt this up real quick. There's one up in this cluster right here. It is this one right here. And then there's also this one right here over by this power transistor. Those were the three that were on the bottom. Everything else is on the sweep board. Now, the really nice thing about that is they're all on the sweep board. They're all on top. So I did not have to dismantle the scope to, um, to get anywhere. I did need to rebend the leads, uh, given that others may want to do this as well. KSP... 10BU, focus, KSP10BU were the transistors that uh, were recommended to me um, by the same individual who told me about the fault. And uh, other than the CBE to BEC uh, leads that need to be done, I think they'll work. So they're very similar, similarly specced. Uh, these were chosen for a specific specification because uh, they'll say chosen from and then they'll give a uh, part number but um, I can't I can't seem uh, nobody remembers that I talked to or there's no documentation that says specifically what the parameter that was the choosing one was I went with uh, that replacement as the transistor as for no other reason other than another technician who works on these and has run into this problem before told me that's what works. So let's feed this thing some signal and we will see if it works. So what I want to do now in the troubleshooting process is I want to, one, turn this on, see if we get a trace. Well, nothing's been eventful so so much. If I had gotten one of these backwards, that would have popped already. Uh, my numbering's different up here, which is fine, because a lot of this was in the sweep circuit. We do have sweep, so that is also f very good. So let's turn on a bit of a function generator now. And what I, what I want to do is I just want to feed random sine wave into the front end, square wave, doesn't matter. All I want to do is trigger on the waveform. So I want a small waveform, because if anything falls out, um, triggering on a low amplitude signal is a lot harder on the scope than triggering on a high amplitude signal. This is pretty easy to find. This is pushing the trigger pretty hard. So I'm just going to let this sit, feed in. I'm going to reduce the intensity again. We have triggered so I can monitor it. If this light goes out, I have a problem. If that light stays triggered, everything's good. I don't need to burn the tube for this testing because uh, I don't need to view the waveform. All I need to know is that it is still triggering. I'm just going to let this burn for probably the rest of the night. It's five-ish o'clock. I usually roll up the sidewalks around midnight, so seven-ish hours of constant on, 
if we don't have a problem, we'll jump back into the alignment and uh, we'll go from there. Um, very glad I have not done any of the sweep alignment yet because a lot of those transistors were in the triggering and sweep circuits. So I would say for sure the sweep section has had its mind smashed out and uh, nothing is in alignment anymore and we'll need to go through the whole process. But that's no problem. We have all the tools here in the lab that we need for that and we'll keep going. So fingers crossed and cautiously cautiously optimistic, but we'll see where we're at. Okay, after a day and a half of um, triggering, everything is fine. So I think we're going to be back into the alignment procedure. So to keep this information separate from the alignment procedure, I'm going to post this troubleshooting and analysis video as a standalone, and I'm going to jump back into the vertical alignment. Uh, we'll start that over from scratch just so I have a good solid cut of alignment uh, for the vertical section for the playlist and we will go from there. As always, I will see everybody in the next video and more is on the way.